beat Siri cover dot pi on our wallet dot dead with our token list token dot txt. And it found it! Woo! Hi everybody, welcome back to the Bitcoin Day Trader channel. Oh, half in a year ago, year and a half ago. <laughs> The tutorial that I made a year and a half ago, I wanted to redo that. Let's just retry it. What I did was I reinstalled a clean Windows 10 version. There is nothing that I pre-installed. It's totally clean. It's a new installation. I'm gonna get BTC Recover working. I will show you guys how I will do it. Boot it up! As you can see, it is a clean Windows installation. It's all basic standard stuff. So I expect only the drivers to be installed. And as you can see, the only thing installed on this PC is Notepad++ and the Virtual Machine Guest Edition. Well, which are the drivers for Windows in a virtual machine? If you installed a virtual machine, check down here, check devices and insert this Guest Edition CD image and it will help you install all the drivers that you need. Okay, let's search for Chrome first. Okay, download Chrome, run Chrome. Turn down the volume. When we have Chrome, we can search for BTC Recover. It will probably get us to the right GitHub page. BTC Recover, and it's from Gurnik. Let's just start by cloning it. Click here, clone download, download this zip file. Let's show the folder and let's move it to our desktop. Let me check, do we have it on desktop? Yes, we have it on our desktop. So let's go back to the page and let's just scroll down because all the information that we need is on this GitHub. The installation guide, where is it? Is it here, the quick start? Open link, new tab, quick start, here it is. Read the installation guide for instructions. Let's go to the installation guide because that's essentially why you guys are here. So we need a lot of dependencies. As you can see here, it's a list of dependencies but we see a lot of dependencies multiple times. So for instance, we see here Python 2.7, we need CoinCurve, PyCrypto, PySHA3, Google Protobuf and Script. And I think that's the basic list of dependencies that we need. So let's just get started with Python. Go to the website of Python, python.org. Make sure you download a 2.7 and not a 3.7 release of Python. Windows, latest Python 2 release. Let's download the latest version. Windows 64-bit MSI installer. Let's install Python. Install for all users, that's okay. Python 2.7, that's a nice directory. Let's check here. I remember that I didn't show you guys this in the last video, but make sure that you add python.exe to path. Add Python EXE to path will be installed on the local hard drive. And make sure that you do not uncheck this pip here, because we need the pip installer later on. I don't know what's happening. It's installed. Python was the first thing we needed. We need PyCrypto. And how do we get PyCrypto? Let's just read. Download and run PyCrypto installer for Python 2.7, either the 32-bit or the 64-bit version. So I'm gonna choose for the 64-bit. Let's check if we have it here. PyCrypto 2.6 for Python 2.7 64-bits. I need this one. So let's install it. It's not that hard. Hup, next, next. I don't even know if in the English language you would say hup, hup next, but we would say it in Dutch. What else do we need? Let's just read this here. So what does it say here? We need to install script. So we're gonna do this part here. It says open a command prompt window and type this to install pylib script. So let's do that. Open a command window. So go to start, type cmd, right click and run as administrator would be the right choice to do. So what we can do now, since we have installed pip install for Python, we can just write this command here. And this command here, all it does is it goes to the folder python 2.7, folder script, and launches pip, and it says, pip, please install pylib script. Let's move you over here, let's move you over there. Again, copy it, right click it with your mouse, and then it will paste it, and press enter. And now it will pip install something. I think that we have to upgrade pip, but I'm not sure, because I have seen that way too many times before. So as you can see here in yellow, it says you are using pip version 18.1. However, version 19.1 is available. So let's upgrade. So select this line here in between the quotations. Then you copy it. And how do you copy it? Pressing enter and then right click. You saw that? Select the text, press enter, and then right mouse click and you copy paste it. So let's run the pip upgrade. And it takes a while. Computers is all about waiting. I don't like waiting. But yeah, that's, that's a reality with computers. And you can buy the fastest computer alive. It will always be too slow for your expectations. So we want to download Libsodium zip file and extract it to a temporary location. So let's download this file, copy paste it over there. 
It is not found. Okay, so here we have a small problem. We need to find Lipsodium and it is not found on the link given to us. So how are we going to do this? We know we need Lipsodium 1.0.16. So let's delete everything in front of it. Let's just search it on Google. Copy this and let's go to google.com. Give me the English Google. I don't know why it gave us freezing. All right, let's search for this file. It's in here. So what, what went wrong? Okay, so what, what went wrong? It's not the right name, that's it. .msvc.zip So instead of this version 1.0.16, we're gonna try 1.0.17 and search for the file that we're supposed to find in it. Okay, but we downloaded this new zip file. So, so let's try and open it. Ooh, this is what we were searching for. It is asking us here, if we could copy the file lipsodium.dll which can be found in x64 and the first thing we see here is x64 so x64 go to release go to version 141 and then to the dynamic and you can find your lipsodium.dll file here okay but we found this lipsodium file here okay copy the chosen lipsodium.dll file into your c python directory so let's grab here let's copy let's go to our c drive to our python folder and it says just paste it here, so paste it here, boom, Lipsodium. Download and install one of the two update packages from Microsoft, either, either, I don't know how to pronounce that, is it either or either? I hear this on television all the time, some people say either and some people say either, and I don't know which is English, which is Australian and which is American, okay, but let's just download this redistributable for Visual Studio, so open it in a new tab, oh, <laughs> Just click it and it starts downloading. Visual Studio is being downloaded, so let's open it. I agree to everything that Microsoft wants and install. Press yes and wait, it won't take long. So apparently we have finished all the objectives to install the dependency called script. And now we need Google Proto Protocol Buffer. This is a pip installation, just like we did it before. Copy this text over here, copy it. Let's go to our command window. Right click, press enter and wait for the installation. It's automatically installing it. So let's go to the next step. And what is it? It is a GPU acceleration for Bitcoin Unlimited Classic XT Core Litecoin QT. So this is especially for people using the Bitcoin Core wallet or the Litecoin Core wallet or any derivative from those wallets. So one of the things that I got a lot of questions about was this PyOpenCL version 2017. Apparently they update this version every quarter of a year, if I am correct. This is not the right version anymore. But what do they say here? Let's just read. Download the latest version of PyOpenCL for OpenCL 1.2 and Python 2.7. So we can find it here. For the best compatibility, be sure to select a version of PyOpenCL 1.2 and no later, 1.2. So look for CL12 in the file name and also look for 2.7, for Python 2.7. So let's open this in a new page, the PyOpenCL. It's skipped to this place. And as you can see, PyOpenCL 2017, the one that they want us to download, as you see here, this cannot be found anymore because we're already way further in time. So what we need to find is a version which has this CL for OpenCL 1.2 and this 2.7, 2.7 for Python 2.7. One of these two, we have 64-bit version, so we need this dot will file. So let's just download it. Show in folder. So what are we supposed to do? If I remember correctly, we have to pip install this file. Open the command prompt window and type this into this, this line here will bring us to this folder here. Let's just do that and let me just show you how it works. Let's move to this directory. So as you see here, they type cd which means change directory and we're changing our directory to the user profile downloads. So as you see here, C user mister, as my username on this computer is mister. As you can see in this small window over here, there are a couple of files and if we would check directory, press DIR for directory, we will see exactly the same files and folders. You see, it's the same. And then we're telling it, install this new file that we just downloaded. But this name here is not correct. So we need this part. Let's just write ourselves c double dash slash python python two seven slash scripts if I'm right script I'm supposed to use backslash and not forward slash pip install 
we want it to pip install a file in the directory that we are already in, this Mr. Downloads, and it's called pyopencl. So let's write pyopen. Whenever you write something in command and you press tab, it will autofill it. So press enter and wait. And now it's going to pip install stuff. I don't even know what it's going to pip install. So we wait and 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 we wait. Woo! Oh man, it's gonna be such a long video. Oh. But yeah, it doesn't matter. That just does not matter. It's good for us installing collected packages. So it's installing all those things. As you can see here, a lot of information, a lot of packages, and we need all those packages. So apparently we did install the basic dependency to use BTC Recover. With these dependencies, you can already use it on a standard wallet, but you cannot use the, the seed recovery function. Coin curve, did we? No, we did not install coin curve and PySha yet. We need to install this. It is a pip installation as well. You see here, pip install coin curve, just copy paste it here and press enter and wait. Wait a while, install. Nice. Is there anything else that we might need? Okay, script, coin curve, I got that, Google Protobuf. I think we have everything that we need already. So if you are new to my channel, it would be so awesome if you would subscribe to my channel to let me know that you enjoyed my videos and obviously to find more of my videos because I have a lot of tutorials on the subject or on Bitcoin related stuff. So, woo, we did it. Man, I did not expect myself to be able to do this that first track on a clean system. I haven't practiced this before. It's, it has been such a while that I installed this file, this file, this program. The last time that I installed this program was when I uploaded that video. I think I called it BTC Recover for Beginners or something like that. There's only one way to find out if it actually works and that is by actually using it. I need a wallet. Let's download, just do it with the new version. We're gonna download the Bitcoin Core for Windows. Let's call it Bitcoin. And let's show it so you guys can see the trader wallet. Are you sure you want to? Yes, I am sure. Let's back up this wallet. Let's call it wallet.dat. And let's move this wallet file into this newly extracted folder in the BTC Recover master folder. If we want to go there in our command window, just go over here, select this path in the address bar, copy it. So right click, copy. Let's go into the command window, type CD for change directory space and right click and press enter. Make a new token file. So right click, press new, select the text document and let's rename it to token.txt. In a token file, you write parts of the password that you can remember and save it. It will now be able to brute force it. Well, let's redo this command here. BTCRecover.py on our wallet.dat with our token list named token.txt. And now I expect it to be able to brute force. And it found it! Woo!